show you a that uh, red dot. Now, now it started recording. So once again, I welcome Professor Alvira uh, Bertha Alvira Pro from Argentina. She has been a very famous ESL teacher. Her specialization in pedagogy or phonology of teaching Not phonology. Very Pardon? Very famous. No. I'm I'm more famous outside my country than in my own country. I'm not famous there. Here in Argentina, I'm not famous. <laughs> you're not famous? So no. what? Uh, but online, online you're quite popular. Online you're quite popular. Because she got interviewed on 11th February, uh, just uh, because uh, she had been uh, very much, uh, you know, channelizing herself through online mode uh, rather than the offline. And she is currently living in Argentina. She has specialization in phonology and pedagogy of uh, teaching English. She is also uh, very much uh, into, you may say, business English teaching, uh, English to multidisciplinary students, like business uh, communication to hospitality students, tourism, and you may say, varied kind of disciplines she has been engaging online. And moreover, why she has been so um, you mean, graciously been invited here because she has written a book and it's an e-book. It was uh, earlier not in publication, uh, 2018, but approved kindly, but then she got self-published in 2021. And that e-book is titled as Learning English Through Films and her work is through the uh, film David Copperfield. Means she, uh, she is also uh, very ex uh, expert in writing on not only the content, but also uh, transcribing scripts for the films. And therefore, uh, she's been a wonderful, you know, um, you may say she has language acquisition skills uh, with regard to uh, acquiring from the films, running films. So here we are going to have her lecture on Charles Tegan brought to the cinema, especially from the movie David Copperfield. And let's see how she would engage all of us with her lecture. Wish you good luck and happy Valentine's Day. Thank you very much. Your friends. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, yes. It's an honor to be here. I'm very happy to be here. Um, you are giving me a, a big help because as, as I told you, nobody knows me in my country. <laughs> and thanks you, I will be known all over the world. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, well, um, I, I taught um, remotely, but since two years, uh, for two years, because when the lockdown begin, began, uh, I be, begin um, giving lessons uh, remotely online. But uh, the other uh, places where I worked were uh, presentially, uh, not, not online. Uh, in the Instituto Educativo Argentino, where people uh, study to be technicians of tourism, uh, public relationships, uh, foreign trade brokers, uh, and hospitality, I uh, taught them presentially, not online. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I would like to share uh, my screen with you. Uh, I will show you a PowerPoint hmm. um, telling you the benefits of the book. Uh, for example, this is the, the, the front page of the book. And you know that while making the title of his book, Dickens okay. wrote 15 times, 15 titles, because she, he wrote one and she didn't like it. <laughs> he tore it uh, out and uh, write another one. And one, the previous, 
Ma'am, see. can you see her screen? Ma'am, can you see her screen? Ah, uh, you you can't. No, yes, I, can. I can. I can. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, let me just let me just. Yes, yes. Here it is available. Good. Thank you. No, yes, I was telling that, uh, for example, the previous title of uh, David Copperfield's book was The Personal History, Adventures, Experiences and Observations of David Copperfield the Younger of Blunderstone Rookery. This is a long title. So he ended up using David Copperfield, only two words, his name. Uh, well, you see that uh, using the book and the movie, students will have a source of new vocabulary, idioms and expressions. Lots of idioms, lots of expression, because as you know, this is unauthentic material. Uh, and uh, it has all the complexity the language has. For example, it is not like a textbook that teaches you English from the very beginning and uh, it gives you um, easy topics, easy grammar topics, and then he, it continues uh, giving you more complex grammar. Now, uh, with the book and the movie, we have all the language as it is. And you will know a lot of new vocabulary, expressions, and idioms. Well, what I did was to write the script, to add um, context, because if you have only what the character says, perhaps reading the book, you don't understand anything. But giving a context where they are, how uh, they uh, how they are, the, their emotions. So all this I added to the script, and I made lots of activities to practice the four skills, to, pra to practice uh, speaking, listening, reading, and writing, the four skills. And um, I didn't tell you that the, the book is divided in 18 chapters. Each chapter corresponds to uh, the analysis, the language analysis of 10 minutes movie. So in each part, there are, uh, there is a relevant grammar there. So I took that grammar and, and, and uh, I explained uh, at the back of every chapter, I explained the grammar relevant on that uh, part of the, of the movie. And um, they, the students will do exercises on that grammar point. So uh, students are learning grammar in context. The grammar that appears there, not just grammar in its totality. Well, um, there we have automatic linked correction. So at the back of the book, there is the answer key. This is a guide for the students because they want to uh, practice themselves and uh, perhaps they, they think they, they made a mistake or something so they can check what I wrote, the, the answer I wrote for them. And it's in a way it's a help for them uh, to get corrected. No? But and, um, anyhow, they can make any other uh, correction version by themselves. Well, the, the next slide is about multimedia. Because how can you uh, get the movie? You can get the movie uh, from YouTube. So I am combining multimedia to make uh, the book because the movie uh, is the, the, the oral um, the oral uh, platform for, for the for the book. In a way, I can say that the book is the uh, workbook of the movie, the movie's workbook. 
well, as I told you, about authentic audiovisual material, because you are watching the movie and then you are uh, reading uh, the book. Um, well, and, and the book has, uh, well, we, we, we are reading classical English literature. In fact, the original book, uh, can you see me? Because I, I, I only can see my screen, but I don't know if you can see me. Yes, we all can see you. You're showing us a book. Yes, this book has 1900, nine, uh, 900 pages. This is the original book. So you see that uh, while making the movie, they adapted and it is shorter. And they made some uh, changes in the plot and there are less characters. But um, they, they have taken many, many quotations from the original book. So in a way, you are reading a classical English literature by reading my book because um, there, is, there, there are many, many quotations from the original book. And it's easier because perhaps it's harder to read all the original book because it's so long. And my book has only 300 pages. And um, there is a lot of activities and images. Well, and when. Uh, here we have an easy learning display because, as I told you, it is divided in 18 chapters. Uh, so the, the length of the movie is nearly two hours, 180 minutes. So uh, each chapter belongs to 10 minutes uh, movie. And um, there are sections. For example, the first one is the reading section when you read the script with the, the context. Uh, then the, the glossary or the lexics section, uh, there you have the, the glossary and uh, exercises to do with the glossary. For example, se sentences, sentence completing with uh, completing the blanks with the words from the glossary. And uh, there is a um, speaking and writing section, listening section. There are activities uh, for lower level students. Uh, these are two or false activities and uh, multiple choice, choose the better choice, uh, A, B, or C for lower level students. And the purpose is to understand the movie completely from the beginning to the end. That's why I wrote here, complete understanding of the whole movie. This is the goal and the purpose. Because in a way, you are guided by myself in the book with, the, with that goal. When and you are going to uh, know or to learn English through the novel's characters. So this is a, a biographical um, work because Dickens himself suffered a lot when he was ch a child. He has to work and he has his father sent to prison because of that. And in a way, in the movie, uh, it is shown that uh, David is suffering a lot because he gets uh, is an orphan he loses his his mother and father and that man here is the landlord who is going to lodge him uh, when he's in london working you will see that her stepfather um, evicts him from the house and send him to to work in a a warehouse uh, in a bottling um, warehouse. They had to bottle uh, wine. They had to clean the bottles and then replenish with wine or with liquor. Uh, well, and this woman here is uh, his aunt. Uh, his aunt is Miss Miss Betsy, 
and uh, the actress that plays the role of Miss Betsy is Sally Fields. And this one is uh, Richard Williams. Ah, and uh, I was going to say that the students, while learning uh, about the characters, they are going to transfer that knowledge to their lives. And in a way, they are going to know how to express their emotions or what happens in their lives, because it is biographical. The, the fact that being biographical helps them to acquire the language of life. Well, as you see, watching a movie arises a lot, a lot of emotions. And according to Piaget, which is a, a psychologist, uh, he says that when you are exposed to uh, emotions, you learn better because you remember. Uh, if it's an emotion is uh, of happiness, perhaps you remember better things. Well, as uh, you can see, that uh, the, my book has a lot of activities, so the teacher doesn't have to do anything. She only has to open the book and work with the students. Because I also uh, I wrote here lesson planning, time saving. Uh, teacher saves time. Sorry, teacher save time. They don't need to plan anymore. It is all done in the book. Well, and you can see that it is motivating, attractive, entertaining, um, because they are watching a movie and they are eager to know what happens to the character and how the plot continues. And uh, the approach I use is the natural approach, the audiovisual approach. And this is a natural uh, way of learning because uh, people uh, learn English by social interaction from the very beginning when they are children. And watching the movie, they are immersed in David's life and they can uh, stop the movie, rewind it, watch it again, again, and again, and again. And the, the repetition is the key because children are exposed to the same language every day. And that's the way they acquire the language. Listening and listening, for example, greetings every day, good morning, good morning. They acquire how to say good morning, how to say I want a, a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, whatever. The length of the book uh, gives you, um, you can, you can um, spend one year because the book uh, has 18 chapters and lots of activities to do. So you can use it one year learning time. Well, it is suitable for self-study students because, as I, as I told you, they have the answer key and they can study by themselves without the teacher. And I have it in half copy, uh, which is the book. Uh, I am going to, to show you the physical book. And it is also in PDF format, which is the ebook. Well, the target readership is for intended for students uh, of uh, intermediate to advanced level of English. So uh, a person who does not know anything about English can't do it, but intermediate students can and onwards. Well, I wrote here non-compulsory activities because this is uh, up to you. You can skip 
you can add, you can invert, you can uh, take out the activities you doesn't like and uh, put or use the ones you like. Uh, it is not something that you have to do this and this and this. No, this is up to the teacher and up to the students. They select or they choose what, what uh, they want to do first. For example, if they want to watch uh, the, the first chapter, which is, is uh, the 10 minutes, the first 10 minutes of the movie, they can. If they want to read the script first, they can. If they want to uh, know about grammar first, they can. And this is specially made uh, to use in a, in a workshop like this one, which is a cinematography and literature workshop. This is uh, just for this uh, workshop here. Uh, bueno, and these are the people who helped me to proofread uh, this book. Uh, one of them is Professora Alejandra Lameiro. She was my former teacher of um, oral language and uh, written language and culture also. I had her three years, three, three years running. Professora Marcela Villan lives near my house. She's a friend of mine. Uh, traductora Laura Verati and traductora and Professora Nadia Galati. She is uh, my schoolmate, but from the teaching training college. And the digital design and editing was made by Professora Luciana Maria Dini because she is a teacher of uh, informatic technology. And I, I wasn't very well prepared uh, in computing you know, to put things uh, in the right position. Because as I told you, I am not young. I am 65 years old and all this new technology, I am not acquainted with all this new technology. Bueno, uh, this is the end of, of the presentation here because I have, I give the link to the movie, which is this one, my web page and my phone number. And I can show you uh, perhaps a bit of, a, uh, I have to, uh, this is the book but the first i would like to show you the trailer and the trailer is you know is here can you see my my screen uh, hello yes i can see yes well, this is one minute. Uh, yes, that's okay. you can see. Yes, I, I, I am going to show you the presentation of the trailer of the movie, so you have a, a big idea, of, a short, a short idea of what is it about. So, I, I don't know if you can listen. Let's see if you can uh, listen. It is the story of a boy. You Can you listen? Yes, yes, we can listen. Yes, ma'am. Requires a great deal of correcting. Of all the boys in the world, I believe this is the worst boy. I'll conquer that fellow. If it costs him all the blood he has, I'll do it. Goodbye, my child. Sent away. Your mama is dead to find his place in the world. What should I do with him? I should wash him. Who grew up to be a man, discovering the power of the heart. So you fancy yourself in love, do you? I adore her with all my soul. Does her father know? You are not to communicate in any way with my daughter. Is that agreed? The touch of fate. You think I was too young to be a wife? The pangs of grief. She died like a child that was going to sleep. 
we must live misfortune downtrod. The memories of childhood. This is my great nephew, David Copperfield. Oh, honored, I'm sure. And the threat of enemies. I've always hated you, Copperfield. But the story he would tell would embrace every part run, Copperfield, run! of a harsh world still filled with beauty. And you say you're not in love, Trot. And the destiny of an amazing life. Anthony Andrews, Eileen Atkins, Hugh Dancy, Max Dolby, Sally Field, Michael Richards, in the Charles Dickens masterpiece, David Copperfield. Well, let's uh, continue uh, watching my book. I'm going to share it with you. Can you see? The, the front page? Yes, ma'am. Well, this is a short introduction about myself, a bio, and the bio of Charles Dickens, Charles Dickens' bio, what the, the book content, contents. So you see, this is Agnes, Emily Hamilton, Agnes. This is Miss Merston, Aileen Atkins, Sally Fields, this is Miss Betsy, Michael Richards is Mr. Makova. This man is the, um, the ones that was in, at school, the whole monitor at school, when he was at school. This is his mother, Clara, Clara Copperfield. And this man, Mr. Quinion, is uh, Mr. Merson's partner. This is Peggotty, which is the maid of Clara. Uh, Miss Dora Spenlow was his first wife. Uh, James Stifford, a, a friend from childhood, from school. Uh, this man is Mr. Dick. Mr. Dick was a protege of Miss Day, Mr. Uh, Betsy. Miss Betsy Trotwood. And this man is Uriah Heep, the evil from the story. This man here is Mr. Crickle, which, which was the headmaster of the school. And that man is uh, Mr. Edward Merston. David's stepfather, another very evil man. Uh, this is Emily, or little Emily. Uh, she is the niece of Mr. Peggotty, and Mr. Peggotty is uh, Peggotty's brother. He lives in Yarmouth in a, uh, in a boat, in a boat made uh, like a house. This is Mr. Barkis, the coachman, and Mr. Barkis gets in, uh, get, gets married with uh, Peggotty. This is Mr. Whitfield, who is uh, Agnes' is father. Willing. I know that sentence, Barkis is willing, is very important. Uh, can you repeat? I said that sentence, Barkis is willing. Well, ah, yes. Yes, this appears all the time. Yes, yeah. but he always says, Barkis is willing. Yes, it is repeated in the book and in the movie also. You're right. And this man is Mr. Jorkins. Mr. Jorkins and Mr. Spenlow. Both of them were uh, partners uh, in, a, in a legal uh, business where they would work for the first time being a trainee because he got the, the degree of lawyer and he wanted to practice there. Uh, his aunt bought him uh, articles of apprenticeship. Uh, this man is Tony Travels, another friend of childhood and of school. And this one uh, is uh, Emily, but when he was young. The other was when he was an adult. This, ma this boy is 
mainly potatoes. A mate, a workmate, while uh, David was working in the bottling warehouse. And this uh, is Ham, Ham Pegotti, who is uh, the nephew of Pegotti and Mr. Pegotti. This woman is Mrs. Click, Mrs. Crickle. Mrs. Crickle is the wife of uh, the headmaster of uh, Salem School headmaster. This man uh, is Dr. Chilip, the one who assisted Clara when he was giving birth to his child, David. Uh, well, this is Tony Traddles when he was young. And this is Mrs. Heap. This is uh, Mr. Heap's uh, mother, the, the evil man, no? Well, this is uh, Mrs. Makova, uh, Mr. Makova's wife. This is Mrs. Gamage. This is a protege of Mr. Pegotti because he was uh, the, the wife of uh, Mr. Pegotti's partner. And as uh, his wife, his husband died, she, she was left very poor and ill, and uh, uh, Pegotti, Mr. Pegotti wanted to, to help her, and uh, he took her to his house to live with them. Uh, this is Miss Horton. The, uh, she appears in, uh, perhaps, I don't know if it is a character of, a real character of the original book. This is, uh, she is perhaps, one of the, the changes they, they made while they are doing the adaptation of the, of the book. This is Miss, Miss Kex. I, I don't know if she, she is in the book. Do you know that? Well, uh, here you have Peter Medak, which is the director, and Eleanor Ragalji, the cinematographic um, person. Well, and the script was written by John Goldsmith, and this movie was taken uh, uh, into a series to be broadcast through television. Well, the the producer Al Hall, Hallmark Entertainment and TNT. Morgan Sullivan is another produ producer, Robert Halmy, Greg Smith, David Picker, John Davis, and Michael Pickwood. All of these are the producers. Well, in this part, I explain how to use the book. Uh, the, the movie is without subtitles, so they are going to listen without sub subtitles. So if they don't understand, they resource, resort to the written part. And the, the written part is the, uh, the reading section is here. So this letter, uh, this um, slant letter here is my in intervention, no? my production. I highlighted, for example, in bold, this uh, some terms or words, for example, yes, I say the meaning of all in bold type are explained in the glossary section of each part. Perhaps they, they don't know this, this word, acquaintances. And the part which is in highlighted in yellow here is one of the grammar points relevant that appear <laughs> going to teach, for example, the difference between so and such and the usage and the past perfect, because appears also the past perfect. Well, this is a, 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 an investigation work because, as I told you, I am not a native speaker of English, so I encountered many things that I didn't know. 
So I have to search and investigate for by myself. Why is that? Why, why Mister is not with a dot? <laughs> because uh, it is British English and not American. American put the dot, but British don't. And for example, this one, if you will excuse me, madam, this is not a conditional structure. This is a polite request. But I, I wanted to, I, I had to, to search for that because I, I, I got impressed myself. Why was this, this if here? In, uh, because I know in conditional sentences, the if clause doesn't have the will. It has the present, present, uh, simple present in the if clause. But it, as it was here in, in the if clause, but it was not a clause. <laughs> it was a polite request. Uh, when I, I told you that the 14 titles hmm, about the, and I explained what is Blunderstone. It's a village in a civil parish in Wabini, district of English, of English county of Suffolk. It is in the north of the country. Well, you see that only three pages of written text. Then you have images. This is Miss Betsy watching from the outside window, watching inside the house from the window. And uh, they, they use the first conditional here, and I highlighted it in blue because I will explain that point at the back. Well, this is the glossary. In the glossary, you find, uh, for example, that the verb to affront. It's a regular verb, transitive, and it's used in formal situations. That's why I put an F here the capi with capital letter. The meaning is to insult or to offend and is used with the preposition by in passive voice. This is in Spanish, no? it's insultar, offender. And this is a sentence sample. His insolent speech affronted us. The teacher was affronted by the swear words the students were saying. And here you have the phonetical transcription. There is a schwa here because the first syllable is not accented. And um, this, uh, this, the accent is in the second syllable, front, a front. And do you know uh, phonetic symbols? Perhaps the students uh, doesn't know. I don't know. You teachers, I am sure you know, but the students, do you know phonetic symbols? They can uh, write in the chat if they don't, or if, if they do, no. Well, so, uh, only uh, seven, seven glossaries. Well, this expression, ta, 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 is an onomatopoeia of disapproval or reprimand. Here, God bless, because when he sees, um, when Miss Betsy goes, the first time he goes to uh, David's house, he, uh, sorry, she um, doesn't know Clara. And it was dark because it was uh, the evening. And he wanted to watch her better. So he took a candle and put it closer to Clara's face and says, God bless my heart. You're a very baby, she says. Entonces, uh, the verb bless here is used in the subjunctive mood. It doesn't take S uh, in the third person singular. God bless my heart. No, God blesses because it is in the subjunctive. Here, then, uh, as she was pregnant, Clara was pregnant and she was due to, to have his baby. Uh, in, in the hours uh, following. And Miss Betsy says, sit you down, uh, child, sit you down. 
And instead of saying sit down, she puts this pronoun here between the verb and the particle. And I explained here that this separable phrasal verb is used to address old or ill people to help them to sit down. The, uh, she says that way because it is used for that purpose. Bueno, eh, let's continue watching. These are the activities to do with the glossary. I put some sentences and they have to complete the blanks with the, the words from the glossary. I also ask them to eh, make their own sentences because those sentences were made by me. No, then you have to, uh, now it is your turn to make your own sentences with the words from the glossary. You may consult dictionaries to look up the correct collocation because perhaps students uh, doesn't know which word, word go uh, together with another word, with another verb, another adjective, etc. cetera. Uh, then I ask the students to read again the script and look for another unknown words they might, they might encounter. And make similar glossary, uh, looking the words up in two dictionaries, a monolingual one uh, and a bilingual one. And uh, make sentences or copy the sentences, because many dictionaries gives you the, the sentence sample. So it's in a way, it's uh, good to copy. That way you get accustomed to the use because uh, making sentences by themselves, by their own, if they are not exposure to, to English, they could make some mistakes and write uh, the collocation that uh, are not correct or are not uh, usable. Well, near, uh, uh, here we have the reading and listening section. And these are uh, seven questions for the students to get guided to later on uh, tell the account of the story of what has happened in those 10 minutes of watching the movie. Uh, well, uh, the, this is the speaking and writing section. They have to write uh, the account of those or retell the story of those 10 minutes. Uh, this is work in groups because I tell, I ask to play the, the volume off and watch one scene. And they have to perform the, the actors. One student will be, for example, Miss Betsy, and the other one will be Clara. And they have to guess what are they talking about? What is their conversation? In a way, they are trying to speak, but not using the same words of the movie. So uh, can I interrupt? Can I interrupt? Is it like a dumb charade where you make them play the game or is it role play? Yes, it's a role play. It's a okay. role play. But uh, you know that this was made before the pandemic. So um, if they are in at school, they can uh, form groups and practice. Mm? And I have the television there with the movie for them to, to watch that part. I, I play the, the volume off and they began to perform what the uh, characters are saying. And this one is a, a writing activity because they have to choose a, a character, a, a, a character's rendering, and write a paraphrase writing version of your own, of their own. Well, then um, in the listening activity, I wrote again all the script, but I uh, erased erased some parts, for example, this part. So they have to listen and complete the blanks. They can listen 
three times or much, much of, much more times. And in a way, this helps them because they are reading again. This is repetition. And the key to learning a language is repeat, repetition, being exposed again to the, to the same uh, script they have read before. These ones are the multiple choice uh, activities because they have to choose the best response for these statements. A, B, C, or D. And this is for uh, students of lower level of English because they only have to choose. And this also, true or false activities. Well, and here comes the grammar point, grammar section. I explain the past perfect. I give this frame with colors. No? Um, separating the subject, the auxiliary, the past participle, giving the examples, the positive, the negative, and the question form. And here they have the exercises. They have to uh, put the verbs in brackets into the past perfect tense. Well, the same con the conditional sentences uh, first type. I explain, and they have to do the exercises, and so and such. And the exercises. And I ask them to write three or four sentences using the structure so and such, using the structure um, first conditional and using the past perfect. Well, this is the second chapter, and it has the same structure as the other ones. So we can watch the movie. I don't know what time is it. Let's see, because the... You have 15 uh, minutes. Professor Berta, you have 15 minutes. minutes? One, oh, five, okay. We can watch the first 10 minutes of the movie. So if I... The, uh, uh, um, can you see? Sure. Sure? Yes. Well. Bueno, let's uh, play the movie.
gorgeous ladies. The most unpleasant scene. But I thought you should know the truth about that man. Mr. Copperfield, I believe you did it for her. To save her. I hope she is saved, ma'am. But the truth is, I did it for myself. <sighs> to save myself. Oh, if you'll excuse me. Miss Horton, ma'am. Such a very distinguished man. to be the hero of my own life, or whether that station will be held by anybody else, these pages must show. To begin my life with the beginning of my life, I here record that I was born at Blunderston in Suffolk. I was a posthumous child. My father's eyes had closed upon the light of this world six months when my own died. An aunt of my father's, and consequently a great aunt of mine, Miss Betsy Trotwood, was the principal magnate of our family. My father had once been a favourite of hers, I believe, but she was mortally affronted when he married my mother without first presenting her for inspection and approval. never met again, and she'd never seen my mother. The Rockery. Indeed. Where are the rooks? I see no such bird. This, then, was the state of matters on what I may be excused for calling that important day. I think. Yes? Miss Betsy Trotwood. You have heard of her, I dare say. I have had that pleasure. And now you see her. Well, 
bless my heart. You're a very baby. I'm a childish widow. And I will be a childish mother if I live. Nonsense. <laughs> Set you down, child. Set you down. Be in the chair by the fire. <laughs> the rookery indeed. Where are the rooks? What, Mom? Rooks, large black birds of the crow family. There are none here now. In the name of heaven, why the rookery? You mean the house? But of course I mean the house. What do you mean? The name was Mr. Copperfield's choice on account of your nests in the garden. David Copperfield all over. Called a house a rookery and there's not a rook near it. Takes the birds on trust because he sees the nest. Mr. Copperfield is dead. How dare you speak of kindly of him? I know. Sorry, sorry. I put it in here today. Uh, can you listen to me, uh, Shaish, Shaishri? Yes, we can listen ah. to you. Yes, yes. I, I thought, I thought, I, I went away. No. Ah, this is the book. Can you uh, see my book? No. Yeah. Now. It's visual. Yes. So, um, there are only five minutes left for the finish of the you workshop. You can take your full time. You have got uh, still 10 minutes. Ah, 10 minutes. Okay. Um, because uh, how many students are there uh, connected? Uh, they are, see, uh, in my business account, there are around 17 people connected and outside the business account, 14. So total uh, 31 students are connected along with some ah. inside faculty, maybe saying, or monitoring all this technically. Yes. So may I ask uh, them if they have any questions? Perhaps th they can write in the... Yes. Um, in the chat. Uh, but uh, can I ask you two or three things? Yes, yes tell me. You're invited. Uh, with, the, with permission of Jeshri, I must ask the main speaker, what made you take David Copperfield as a book to teach the students English, lean, uh, you know, reading, writing, and learning and speaking skills, the four components that we teach, one. Second, my question is that when you ask the students to do a role play, do they necessarily rewrite in their own words a new script? And how far is it removed from the old script? Do you follow my question? Uh, uh, repeat me the last one. <laughs> okay. When you ask your students to do a, you know, a role play, then while doing the role play, do they rewrite questions? Then if so, how far is it from the earlier script? Uh, yes, yes, they have to use their own words, but perhaps they can use the words uh, learned in the script. But tell but, me something, they are learners, so that means when they write, either they will take words from the script that they have seen from the film that they have seen, or they will read and then rewrite. Is that the approach? Um, sorry. I couldn't understand the, the, the question. Okay. May, may I interrupt? 
No, yes. see, I, have to, I have to get this point clear because I teach this book. I am asking that when they write, or no, when they write their own script, because their language level is not high, they are slow learners. So for such students, do they take words from the script? No, no, yes. This is intended for, these activities are intended for the advanced students. Uh, lower level students only do the true or false or the choose the best option. So if they, if they don't have um, enough vocabulary, they can't, they can't do. Yes, they, tr they will try it. If they can't, okay. what like, is your advanced learners level? What level is that student advanced learners? Uh, C or B. Okay, is it C or B? Okay, fine, perfect. I am so thank you, Jeshri. Sorry, I stopped you. Yeah, I would like to add in something here. Like, as I'm from Jaipur also, and I have come across uh, there's one school, MGD. And when my daughter was studying in MGD in 11th or 12th or maybe 9th, she was a very good writer, basically. Uh, just like Bertha, she could transcribe the writings in her own words. So she used to prepare the scripts and they were given a novel, a prescribed novel of their syllabus, Jane Eyre's novel. And then uh, she has to develop the dialogues out of that novel for the team. And finally, they have to present. Of course, uh, ma'am, uh, Professor Jaya, ma'am, is right that uh, uh, very much this uh, difficult for our soul learners or young learners or maybe even the uh, area in which we are teaching currently. It's only possible in ICS schools or in public schools. Well-groomed students can follow it up. Uh, but I like two things from uh, this uh, Beta's uh, book. What I uh, noticed today is, number one, very good exercise she has picked up. Uh, like uh, choosing from two dictionaries. So means she are, she's trying to acquaint students with uh, their bilingual uh, dictionary also. And uh, she's also trying to make students aware of the monolingual dictionary. It's a very wonderful idea uh, to make the students grasp with the vocabulary and lexical items. And another thing I want to raise a question to Beta. But uh, how uh, can you elaborate upon non-compulsory activities? Uh, Beta, no, they are not, not compulsory. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> if they don't like the activity, they skip it and do another one. No, no, it, it's up to the teacher and up to the student. This is only a guide for them. Oh, but to... Berta, actually, but I want to congratulate you because this is a very interesting way of learning a language and also I find that it is very informative because the student gets to understand the book which is of 900 pages in only 300 pages of workbook. So it's very interesting Bata, and I am very thankful that I got to hear you today. I look forward to it again. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Well, Anybody else? Uh, uh, any other um, participant want to raise something or comment to Bertha? A complimentary Hello. comment? Hello, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, myself, Dr. Deepa Rastogi, English lecturer in government school and also research paper writer. Ma'am, I would like to ask ma uh, Madam Bertha one question. She explained wonderfully in a very extraordinary manner the depth of the literature. Generally, we Indian do not have such uh, potential and do not have such approach to go through the depth of literature. The same question I, I am going to ask, how, uh, how do we make our students, uh, whether in school or in colleges, make uh, unable to uh, understand literature, how to raise the awareness for literature among students. Uh, do you, do you no, understand I, my question? No, the last part, I, I didn't get it. Uh, Ma'am, I want to ask the question, what, what method should we adapt to make children more smart in literature? So that they may, uh, they may prefer literature to study, they go through the uh, references, dialogues and all the uh, uh, micro-observational
things of literature how to uh, attract them in literature uh, well the, watching a movie is a, 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 a splendid way to attract them to literature because this is literature the movie yes, itself sir. is literature and yeah. watching the, the colors, they get excited, they want to know, they, they, they are pleased. Okay. They, they are learning with pleasure and they are uh, approaching literature in this way. Okay, uh, you. You, have, you have to, watch, to uh, search for movies that okay. are uh, literature works, uh, books. There yes. are many, many, many... Um, movies that are based on books yes but the um, best Bota, are like, yeah. Bota, have you written any other such work book apart from david copperfield no no i only wrote the script of uh, two or three more but i haven't made all the activities uh, but uh, you know because this is simple uh, you can uh, in the way while you watching the movie and uh, writing the script, or you can do the the other activities. It's uh, it comes to you uh, naturally as teachers. Let's do this. Let's do that. You can play. We can play with your profession. You can do uh, this 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 guide made by me, but you can do your uh, your version. I would like to uh, I would like to add a comment here in a comm uh, commendable I'll say it's a commendable work in what sense like every uh, uh, you know prefer teachers prefer to allure students uh, attract students to watch movies English movies but I think they never try to create such exercises out of that movie uh, which they have made students to watch and if even if they prepare some exercises they are mostly you know uh, temporary for temporary kind of arrangements but this is a permanent sample for all uh, teachers across the world it's real good hard work it's uh, yes. I'll give her a hand. yes yes it's better perhaps if they get the script that way uh, the teacher is not going to work so hard as i as i did no. So uh, next perhaps... day we will be meeting you next day with uh, uh, going to learn how you have to practice uh, with students your course. So we have uh, uh, with that uh, eight hours class, and out of eight hours class, she has taken one hour class today. So rest seven hours class are still left. Uh, she would not be available on Tuesday. She would not be available no. on Tuesday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, on those days, we have other lectures of other prominent resourceful persons from literary field or language field. So meanwhile, uh, we would all request all of you to at least watch the movie before we come to the next class of Bartha so that we can take interest. She would be asking some question or exercises also later on in her one and a half hour class. So kindly do uh, come prepared. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, a model for us, you, uh, you may say a sample to learn the pedagogy, how to teach English from films. Exactly. Yes, yes. Thank you, Bata. Uh, and to all attendees, I'm really grateful. You're supporting not only Bata, but also Bhopal Nobles University. Uh, uh, and this institution that is celebrating its centenary year of 100 years founding uh, under the ages of Vidya Pracharni Sabha, run by Bhopal Noble Sansthan. So we are grateful to all veterans, to all contributors, to attendees, and to our most endured honorable chairperson. She is real, a uh, beacon, a torchlight, a uh, backbone for all of us to boost up the things. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you, See you. See you tomorrow, all of you. Well. Uh, so we are going to continue. Perhaps we can do some activities. We can read uh, the script. Uh, for example, one student will re will take uh, will read a character, uh, and another student will read 
another character and uh, we will do the activities i request all participants to please come tomorrow because you will be learning a pedagogy in english teaching how to uh, bring uh, the transmission of film in class in structures in lexical way or in other pattern to give a meaningful class to the students so please join in tomorrow uh, it's a request so that you can learn the exercises and to answer those exercises yes and for the students is it is not necessary that they watch the movie because perhaps they don't understand it's better to watch the movie bit by bit in my lessons so right. uh, we have we have we've already watched the first 10 minutes uh, okay. so perhaps next class no but the the other class we will watch the other 10 minutes and that's sure. it sure ma'am thank you ma'am so on. you're welcome i'm very thank happy <laughs> well, nice day to you, you. thank you it, so i i have to i don't know how how to uh, not share the screen with you uh you just uh, leave i i leave the call, yes. leave the call. there is a, a red tab uh, showing the phone call you leave that you just click that red tab so you will be leaving uh, now <laughs> Now I can see you because I was blind. I couldn't see you, but now I can because I have never used this application. This. Uh